Hey guys, George Lynch, your legendary gear in our first of our duck call instructional. This is actually going to be starting from the beginning and actually working right up in this one instructional right up to in the field and being a, a uh, advanced caller going from novice to beginner to novice to, to advance. This is going to be my way of teaching, my way of doing things. You know, there's more than one way, I guess, that everybody does things. This is going to be the way I do it. There's going to be little exercises, the thoughts behind it. And, you know, I've been asked uh, which call is the easiest for a beginner to get out in the field. And whether you're beginner or advanced, I really like the nosedive double read. This call has been chosen one of the top duck calls in Wildfowl Magazine for 2022. This call is really easy for the beginner to get started. It's, it's uh, But it's not a call with a kickstand either with a crutch. This call can also be used by the advanced caller, has a lot of duck build in, has a lot of range from, you know, to the guys who, there's some guys who like the single reads, and I'm gonna break that down. Guys, it's like they think they have the vision that you're not a duck hunter unless you have a single read duck call. You know, um, a single read is a great duck call. It's, it has great range. It's a great duck call in the right hands of a duck caller. There's guys who try to run a single read who are not using the throat and, and opening the throat and, and applying their air pressure right to get that real raspy duck in there, which it can do the single read. I like the single read. I can get the rasp duck out of both of these calls. I tune my single read a little bit stiffer and raspy because I like a single read for me when I'm hunting ducks, uh, especially pressure duck, whether you're hunting timber or I'm hunting a pond somewhere. I like that, that sharp uh, chatter, char uh, sharp feed that I can do with the cut down and single read that I can do just a little bit more over the double read. Doesn't mean it's better, it's just to me, that's one of my tools that, or arsenals I would say, that I like to use on a duck call, on that individual duck call, and that is the sharp feed, working those ducks on the sides and from the rear. But uh, what I'm gonna begin with first, and we'll show the presentation on all three of these duck calls so you can hear it, but air presentation, is everything and a lot of guys will talk about you know what are you grunting and what are you saying into the call and I just want to real emphasize this that don't focus as much as on the your tongue presentation where I seal in my lips and how I'm presenting it because really all you're doing through this this little channel into that soundboard and read is you're pushing air and you want to get that air pushed through there so we're gonna start off with the basic guy. You've never run a duck call before in your life. So you need to lift your right-handed. I like to run the call between my four or my thumb and my forefinger. Kind of rest in there. You'll see how we made that so it kind of sets right in that cradle of your forefinger and thumb. I don't like to, I'll take this the second, third, and fourth finger. I like to set just in front of the hole, but not over the hole where air won't release. So I'm kind of using the tone with these three fingers together. So once you've got this position, not straight out, but kind of down in a 45 degree angle, here's a critical thing too. You see on the, the lips, how they set onto this. I like to use the analogy of you were drinking a bottle of a soda. You're gonna place the bottom lip underneath the channel here, the lip here, you're gonna put under there. And I like to place the top lip right in front of the mouthpiece. So what that does gives me almost like I'm kissing into the call, but it gives me a good solid seal. Now here's what's important. I'm not pinching too tight. You like to get what I call medium where I'm just open and I want to get that air started. I don't want to pinch it too tight and then trying to start my air. Then you're going to get too high a pitch. And for you guys who you know want to grunt into the call, Without the air, and you all know that kind of guy that's sitting in the, in the blind, we all call that the laughing jackass. He's doing the laughing jackass sound. That's that. That is all grunting, no air. So my little exercise, the tip of my tongue is just behind the top of my bottom teeth. With the bottom lip underneath, top lip against. And here's another thing. I don't hold it very loose, pulling, breaking the seal. Uh, I push, we kind of, 
I keep that pressure on that type that top lip to keep that sealed. So what I'm gonna show you is a good little exercise beginning. Before you even start anything, I want you to learn how to present that air. And it's gonna take practice on this because you gotta learn to feel that air, lifting that reed, knowing what air to start with and how to push it to keep that reed oscillated. So what I like to do is a voot. And I'll start with trying to keep that reed up. And I'm pushing that air, trying to get that solid, that note going. What that's doing is learning to, beget that, to get the beginning of that note to start. Now, once I start getting that, I'm going to start going... I'm going to start getting that air. You're kind of using the V-O-O-T sound if you had anything coming projecting up through my lips. Now, this is real critical to remember too. I'm using my lips for leverage. So as I'm, as I remember I told you, I start open. As I'm, and I'm kind of using my lips to help push that extra air at the end. Now, once you got that, and you start stringing that out, and you start getting that, learning to uh, shut that note right off, you don't want to drag it. That's why I'm using the <laughs> boom, the air, it stops right then. So a lot of guys, when they'll start, and <laughs> but it's Once I get that in exercise, now some guys will say, you want to say 10, 10. <laughs> Again, it's too much grunt. It's not enough air. The air. <laughs> and I'm starting that air right here at the push point. Kind of the same thing as, as goose calling, the push point. Now, I'm going to show you what that's going to sound like. I'm going to lengthen it and then start shortening it once you start practicing that. Remember, perfect practice makes perfect. Now, starting off that voot and using that air, you'll hear me when I'm gonna start now is once I get that going, the first one, you're starting a cadence. Well, what's a cadence? A cadence starts up here and starts coming down the stairs as you're coming with that call. Usually on a hand mallard, you know, you want to give good four, three, you can give three to four cadence. Sometimes a little hen when she's barky sitting on that water, she might give five, six, seven, pat, 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 pat. But you want to get that practice. So when I, my air presentation is just going to start dropping a little more on each note as I'm coming down. That's where the practice takes, you know, you have to, it's going to take over. And you got to learn to know, though, from the beginning, what the basic is and how to utilize the function of it. This is a musical instrument. I always said there's only one thing more finicky, what God made more finicky in a duck call, and that's a woman. And so any of you married guys probably know that. But anyway, we're going to start and I'll show you that cadence. Now 
you heard that. And the cool thing about once you get being able to master that little sound is I can start using my air in that presentation and drag that first note, then Hear that again, we'll get that in the front of the call. Now with practice, again, with the practice making perfect, you're gonna start hearing that. And I recommend everybody has a cell phone, everybody record yourself, listen to your cadence, listen to somebody listen to this video um that we're doing but also record yourself and you're actually going to be the best your own critical most critical judge and uh running that call so air presentation using the voot v-o-o-t now i got that down now some guys will talk to me and say hey i'm struggling with the uh with, a, with my cluck or my, you know, quack, whatever they're doing, their little quack. I'm kind of doing the voot again, but I'm voot, voot. that's where I'll add a little more voice inflection. Again, comes with practice, and you'll hear. Comes with practice, you could probably hear that over the video in my throat and then vibrating the larynx right there to get in that quack. We're gonna go from the quack now to the feed. Now I do a couple of feeds and what I like to do is, you know, the good rattling feed, which is actually a, a feed that they'll do and it's actually a chatter that they do when, they're, when the ducks are flying a lot, you'll hear. doing in that and that again is going to take practice takes the tongue dexterity once i start the dig it i start getting the voice i push the air between my lips and up to my tongue from my throat to push it into the call that's going to take practice again learning the air but you're kind of getting the logis the logistics of what i'm doing to get it started so again using the air my tongue and a little bit of the dig 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 now one I like to do a lot when if I'm working ducks and they're coming in is I do kind of a, what a true feed. Now I'm not just doing a da da da. Again, it's too rattly. I've got to have some air behind that to push it up. So we're gonna add a little bit of the air. doing this feed right here where I'm doing the dig 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 my tip of my tongue of course has to come up and it's rattling back and forth giving me that sound I'm using more of my throat on the real feed so the tip of my tongue stays behind my teeth using my throat what that does it is it is forcing me to use more um larynx with the air to get that deeper feed this this feed's going to be a little bit deeper and work so I, then i can change pitches with it if i want and, and I'll, and you can see i can run that feed then i can raise my tongue up do the 
So there's a little bit of feed. Now you see, changing that feed sound, I backed off on my voice a little bit and then just pushed my air to get those little squeals. So we basically now got doing the hen, the hen uh, cadence. We've got doing the feed. We got, uh, and the fast feed, slow feed. And I think we've got all that covered. That, and that's with the nose dive. All that's going to be the same with a single read. I have a question for you. Yeah. What about calling with the reeds down? One thing, <laughs> that's a very good point. We're gonna, if you ever happen to take the reeds out of this call, the double reed is always made, we put a little bend in the front of that, which allows that air, gives that air under there, gives a little more rasp. But that bottom reed is very important that when we flex that reed, that reed one needs to bend up. If it bends down and you put it in there, you will stick, which air lock, which is not sticking the call, you will air lock that call because your air will then go over the reed and then airlock it down, pin it down. So if you ever happen to take a call apart, always make sure that the bottom reed is flexing bowing up to get that, that power punch into that call. On the insert, you usually say, run the call with the reeds down, not up, not the flex, but the actual reed. And that's why we engraved the call, the top of the call. Okay. You'll notice on the nose dive, another thing that's important, a lot of duck, and it, to me, uh, some guys might think it's per personal preference. I've actually, you can change the uh, tone a little bit, and actually, you're also, I think it runs better spit-free more, but a lot of, you'll see a lot of duck collar makers will run their calls with the, the uh, soundboard up, is what we're going to call it. What I like to do, so when you're running that call and your barrel goes on, as you're running that and you're, you know, your moisture goes in there, that moisture is gonna hang into that tone channel and it doesn't take much for that little bit of moisture to stick and hold that. What we do here at Legendary Gear, and you see our engraving helps you out because it forces you to put the soundboard facing down. Now you're using gravity as you're running that duck call, your moisture, you're blowing that right out of the tone channel and down into the barrel. So. That's how we like to run it, and I definitely believe it makes a difference. A little bit deeper in tone, but I definitely think it makes a difference running moisture-free a little bit. So I'm going to give a little run of this double read if I happen to be out in the field. And, um, I mean, you can, with the neat thing about the range of our calls, we can do a, a highball. I'm not a big high ball guy. I think a lot of the, the ducks, you can give a couple notes. I think once the ducks start coming, what separates from the men from the boys and, and ducks is it last 60, 70 yards. It sounds like a duck. So a lot of times, if I have those ducks' attention and they're coming, so if we see them out there, I like to give my first kind of a basic. You see me, I'm, uh, the first note is loud. I'm not getting real fast, but I'm just... Kind of that hens on the water that right there is just a basic a note that i'm watching those ducks to get a response if those ducks start to come in and i see all of a sudden they start they're, they're doing this when i'm hitting that noise or that sound they'll bank you know a lot of times they're not those ducks will, will do one or two banks before they'll finally hit that come down so once i hit that note and i know i got these ducks coming the rest of it guys is and i'm not gonna keep
I'm not gonna keep working those ducks. Once I've hit those ducks, give them that. Got the greeting, got a little bit out there. I'm getting some reaction. Those ducks are gonna swing and I'm gonna watch those ducks. And to me, you know, the ducks, their eyes are on the side. So they get better looks what's down in front of them from the side. So if you ever hunted ducks and geese, you have a single coming in there, you'll see them come straight down and turn their heads like this. They're getting the better look which is directly straight in front of them, any animal on the side of the face. So a lot of times when those ducks are banking, they're doing that banking to, they're set up to come in. So as they're setting up, they're also visually can see the hole and they're looking for danger, they're looking for anything outside a blind, could be a dog, could be a hunter standing up. But as they're swinging around, I'll get that first swing. What I like to do, once I've hit them, they hit that first bank. When they make that a little bit, behind me and they get about right here where their eyes is kind of away from me but i want their attention to make sure that they're not going to leave <laughs> i get excited on that first note if you can hear that and i <laughs> and i hit a little faster in that hen cadence showing excitement showing a little bit of aggression that right there, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna cause those ducks to, to turn when you hit that specific spot. And once they get out here and they reach out and if they don't make that climb and say they're coming and they make a short, and as they get just past me and they get about 20, 30 yards as they're zooming out there, this is where I do that first note, is I like to drag that first note, some call it the chop chop, but I drag that first note and then hit the next two, three, four quick. So again, drag that first note. Dragging that first note, a lot of times you'll see them when I'll hit that first note and drag, they'll automatically, you can almost, if you hit right the time and the pitch and everything at that um, cadence just right, you can get those ducks to turn again. And each time what I'm trying to tell you is I'm working the side. You know, I'll work the front when they're out there a ways, when they're coming to and they pull to the side. I'll hit the, a little bit on the side, but I really will hit that fast cadence right here where they're more, their eyes are more blocked to me to make them make that final, to make that final turn. When they bank out in front of me and they're almost directly away, you want to drag that first note, do that little chop chop, get them to turn. And once they start coming in, if they hit off to the side here and you want to drift them back in, and that's kind of hitting that fast, quick little clucks. And I'm telling you what, guys, usually after that, when the duck call drops, the BS stops. It's time to shoot them. Now, what you can do a little bit in between there, if you want some fillings and, and this is where you're working with your group and your buddies because I really believe more ducks, probably 90% of the ducks are blown. You know, those that are working ducks are blown out of the field and blown out of the hole then worked into the hole. So what I like to do, if I got a couple guys, you know, you can hit a couple guys, can hit a bit of the hand clucks or hand back and forth, but it's always good on that little side and then little, I call feet filler calls. And that's... <laughs> Have your buddy just doing that little short feed with a little bit of hen, and that's that little young hen just bah, 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 bah. and that's what I call filler sound. He's not the one driving the bus, he's just helped driving, and he's one of the passengers along with it. But it gives that realistic and filling that sound, trying to get those ducks so they actually think we have live ducks. But if you have four or five guys in a bind and all of you are sitting there. <laughs> it's gonna sound like every and you're blowing those ducks out of there. So kind of work in sequence, kind of be a little orchestra that is playing the music. You know, you, you definitely need one guy who's taking charge, who's the leader, and then the rest of the guys are fillers. That's just how I like to look at it. Guys, if you take this from the beginning to the end, everything that we're talking about, we're going to get more into the cut downs and other stuff later. But on this little video right here, this is a good for the beginner to the guy who's been running a call for a while, but has trouble trying to finish those ducks, learning to read those ducks. This is the video for you, man. If you like this, please subscribe. I hope that uh, this will help you guys 
putting more ducks in your gambrel. And uh, we really appreciate it. Go to Legendary Gear USA and check us out. Please give us a like, tell your friends, and always remember, hunt safe, hunt smart, and may the good Lord be your guide.